Thanks, everyone. I believe uh, Her Excellency, the Governor of Tasmania, has arrived, so we'll be able to begin our presentation shortly. So thanks for your patience. We're pretty much on time anyway. Pity the yachts weren't, but anyway, that's the way it goes. Still uh, 14 out there, I believe. So New Year's Eve, here we come. Keep talking, but please keep your masks on. Uh, I'll be telling you the protocols, but unless you're uh, speaking up on the stage or having your photo taken, then we'd like you to keep your masks on. Ladies and gentlemen, could I ask uh, all those that are able to uh, please be upstanding for the arrival of Her Excellency, the Governor of Tasmania, the Honourable Barbara Baker, AC, and the Vice Regal Party. And would you please remain standing for the playing of the Vice Regal Salute. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Would you now please be seated? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Peter G, and I'll be your MC for this official prize giving, giving ceremony for the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. After all the uncertainty after last year's cancellation, how good is it to be in the position to be handing out the spoils of victory and competition in 2021? Before we go any further, we acknowledge that today we are meeting on Lutruwita, Tasmania, Aboriginal land, sea and waterways. I acknowledge with deep respect the traditional owners of this land, the Muhiwina people, which we meet today. I pay my respects to elders past and present and the Tasmanian Aboriginal community that continues to care for country. In terms of COVID protocols today, could I ask only those that are speaking or are posing for photographs to remove their masks, otherwise if you can keep them in place please, and uh, when you come up to receive a reward, uh, no handshaking. Otherwise it's just like normal. Uh, to officially welcome you all here, may I now introduce the Commodore of the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, Mr Richard Bevan. Uh, Your Excellency, sailors, volunteers, members, friends and families. In late July 1945, a letter was received informing of the attention to conduct a yacht race terminating in Hobart, including a request for cooperation to manage the finish of the race. A response was issued dated 1 August 1945. This news gladdens our hearts and we will be most happy to cooperate in any way desired. We will certainly take care of the ships and their people upon arrival. And so the enduring relationship between the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania and the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia began. On behalf of the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, I welcome you here today for the official trophy, trophy presentation for the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, the long-awaited 76th edition of our great race. From Rani to Ichiban and Blackjack, from Captain John Illingworth to Matt Allen and Peter Harburg, we've come such a long way over 76 editions, but still the race maintains its origins, the spirit of adventure, courage and challenge whilst also adding new initiatives, such as the two-handed division for the first time this year. Congratulations and thank you to all the owners, skippers and crews. We love following your stories, your motivations and your aspirations, from the largest super maxis to the smallest competitors in the fleet. What a varied race, a varied and interesting race it has been this year, from very heavy conditions for the first 24 hours, resulting in many retirements, through to frustratingly light conditions across Storm Bay and the River Derwent. And to note that we still have quite a number of hardy competitors still out there, 
So we wish them safe sailing and a successful finish for their race. I'd like to recognise the dedication and passion of our volunteers who work around the clock and without whom this event would not happen. Thank you to Lee Goddard and the race committee, Mick Hocking and the patrol boat crews, Alistair Douglas and the radio room operators, Peter Holmes and the finishing box team, Peter and Judy Martin and the liaison centre team, the Glenorchy Rotary Club for helping us manage the baggage, and the radio relay vessel JBW along with the Young Endeavour. Thank you also to the international jury and to the media team and crews for taking our stories to the world. Also thanks to the staff of our clubs, the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania and the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia under the guidance of Sue Ball and Justine Kirchin respectively. Your teams worked tirelessly over many months in an ever-changing COVID complicated environment, planning with optimism alongside our volunteers to ensure delivery of a world-class event. To our local sponsors and stakeholders, including the Tasmanian Government, Hobart City Council and Tasforts, thank you also. And of course, major sponsor Rolex for your continuing support of our great race. I'd specifically like to acknowledge RYCT past Commodore Tracy Matthews, who took on the important role as finishing coordinator for the race, filling the big shoes of her predecessor, Biddy Badenak. Commodore Noel Cornish and I noted after the spectacular 75th edition of the race two years ago that as incoming Commodores we would need to do something special to make the 76th edition memorable. I have to say that postponing it for 12 months wasn't actually on our agenda. <laughs> but good things do come to those that wait and the 76th edition just completed was indeed a great celebration for our clubs, the competitors, the volunteers and for everybody who loves this great race. You have all stepped up to the challenge and delivered the action on the water. Now is the time to celebrate your success. Enjoy this afternoon's presentations. Thank you and Happy New Year. Thank you very much, Commodore Bevan. Now, could I call upon Her Excellency, the Honourable Barbara Baker AC, the Governor of Tasmania, to say a few words before she presents the first of our tro trophies today. Your Excellency. Thank you very much, Peter, and good afternoon, everyone. I begin by paying my respects to the traditional and original owners of this land, the Palawa people. I acknowledge the contemporary Tasmanian Aboriginal community. I recognise the history of truth, which acknowledges the impacts of colonisation upon our first people. I stand for a future that respects and acknowledges Aboriginal stories, culture, language and history. May I acknowledge among us, and I'm not sure if she's actually here, the Honourable Jackie Protrusma, not here, sorry, CYCA Commodore Noel Cornish, RYCT Commodore Richard Bevan, and Benoit Faletti, General Manager of Rolex Australia. Well, what a wild race the 76 has turned out to be. The Bureau of Meteorology accurately predicted harsh southerlies and confused seas from the first afternoon. And that prediction resulted in nearly half the fleet retiring, with injured crew, damaged rigging, hulls, rudders and engine problems, among others. I know that all of us here will have thoughts of and commiserations for the 37 yachts and their crews that won't be making it to Hobart this year. That is an extraordinary level of attrition for a single sporting event. No wonder the media have been using terms like carnage, pummeled, brutal bashing, treacherous and horrible. Although I note Noel Cornish used the comparatively sedate, very tough. <laughs> Let's try and encapsulate those feelings of disappointment with one example. The two-hander Maverick was the 34th boat to retire from the race. Coast skippers Rod Smallman and Leeton Hulley explain what happened. We hit something heavy. Part of the deck was also shattered. We were the furthest east in the current and thought we were in good shape. We are gutted. The other side of these pains is the thrill of the challenge of competing in the world's premier blue water classic, the great race, returning to our waters after the cancellation last year of what would have been the 76th edition 
of the Sydney Hobart. Who would have thought that such an iconic annual event would grow from its humble, if mischievous, beginnings in 1945, as mentioned by Richard? That year, three members of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, Jack Earl, Peter Luke and Bert Walker, planned a cruise to Hobart in their respective yachts after Christmas. One evening, Captain John Inningworth, RN, gave a talk to the club members. Afterwards, Peter Luke suggested Inningworth might like to join the cruise. Inningworth's legendary reply was, I will, if you make a race of it. Ladies and gentlemen, every sailor is to be congratulated for competing in the Rolex Sydney to Hobart yacht race. Whether or not you have completed or will complete this year's race, remember it is your rising to the challenge each time, or for the first time, that ensures the Sydney to Hobart maintains its status as a fantastic world event of skill, luck, bravery and, above all, camaraderie. Warmest congratulations to Black Jack, skippered by Mark Bradford, and every one of your crew for taking line honours. From the Stark Cannon in Sydney to the Hooter at Castre Espinard, you did it in two days, 12 hours, 37 minutes and 17 seconds. The fact that that is the slowest time since 2004 is a badge of honour in its own way, because it's a measure of just how tough and complex issues race has been. And to Black Jack owner, Peter Harburg, well done. You call this race the grand prize of yachting in Australia. And now, although you weren't aboard this year, this wonderful Super Maxi has done the job twice, taking line honours in 2009 as Alfa Romeo. And to handicap winner Ichiban, skippered by Matt Allen and your crew, well done. While commiserations are due to Celestial, skippered by Sam Haynes and your crew for the upheld time penalty. To Rolex, sponsor of the race since 2002, thank you for your support of this event. Rolex present two of their magnificent chronometers to the winners of this great race. Precious objects that are lasting mementos of our winners' achievements. Finally, on behalf of all who love this event, I heartily thank all of the organisers, volunteers and staff who have made this year's Rolex Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race such a success. It is an enormous undertaking and I congratulate you all for a job well done. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Could you please uh, stay on stage? You've got a very pleasant duty here uh, for the first time as the governor of our proud state to present the trophies in the uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart. And the first of those is the Jack Rookland Memorial Trophy and Cannon. And they also won win the CYCA Trophy for third uh, in the Lion Honours battle. SHK Scallywag 100, owner Seng Huang Lee from Hong Kong, skippered by David Witt. Uh, those two gentlemen can't be with us here, so we call forward a crew member to receive the trophies. In his 35th Sydney Hobart yacht race, Larry Jamison. Larry, please, put your hands together for the crew of Scallywag. That really was a fine display on Sydney Harbour and congratulations. First out of the heads, SHK Scallywag 100. Second over the line, the CYCA trophy goes to Law Connect and their skipper Christian Beck. Law Connect also made the early running down the uh, the coast of uh, Sydney, past uh, South Head, and looked to be going very well and held it to the line to finish second in the Lion Honours battle. Congratulations to all the connections of Law Connect. Third, IRC Division Zero winning the CYCA trophy 
The first yacht due south of Tasman, winning the F and J Livingston and Replica Trophy, and the Line Honours Trophy, the J A Chillingworth Trophy and Replica and Cannon. Of course, the winner, Black Jack, skippered by Mark Radford, owned by Peter Harburg. First after a couple of placings in this race, and could Mark Bradford please come forward to collect the trophy? And looks like he's got a crew member with him as well. So at 1.37 in the morning. A lot of you probably weren't up, but uh, a few of us were. And uh, in the ghostly silence, Blackjack finally claimed that first line honours placing. Congratulations to all the connections. I'm sure Peter Harburg is here with us in spirit. Congratulations to Blackjack. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. You can uh, take a seat and watch the rest of the proceedings. I'd like to introduce to you now the General Manager of Rolex Australia, Mr Benoit Folletti, who will present the Rolex Yachtmaster timepiece to the Lion Honours winner. But first we'll hear a few short words from him. Monsieur Folletti. Your Excellency, Commodores, distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, and sailors. It is a great honor to represent Rolex at the prize-giving ceremony of this 76th Rolex Sydney to Hobart race. First, I would like to warmly thank everybody involved and congratulate especially the two Commodores and their great teams. Commodore Cornish, Commodore Beaven, on behalf of Rolex, thank you for the perfect organization of this year's edition. Let me also acknowledge the volunteers behind the scenes who showed a great commitment and dedication and made this new edition a success. We are all extremely grateful to you. Rolex is the proud sponsor of this iconic offshore yacht race since 2002. It is, as we used to say, the jewel in the crown of sailing and represents definitely one of the most important partnerships in our global event calendar. We will all agree that this edition has been quite special and challenging, both in terms of rough sailing conditions and logistics. Congratulations to you all sailors and I'm very much looking forward to seeing you all in 2022 year which will mark the 20th anniversary of the partnership between Rolex and the Sydney to Hobart. Happy New Year to all and thank you. Goodbye. In the last few days you get to present the uh, Yachtmaster again and M Mark Bradford could you come forward please to receive the uh, Rolex timepiece for taking line honours in this year's race. We should have kept you up here earlier, but uh, you've got your s land legs back, so this will be no difficulty. Oh, yeah, right on cue. Though you didn't trip twice like you did out on the dock the other day. <laughs> Congratulations to Mark Bradford, skipper of such a wonderful 17-man crew on Peter Harburg's Blackjack. And he gets to take it with him this time. Thank you very much, Mr. Folletti. Could I call uh, Commodore Bevan, please, uh, back to the presentation area? We've got uh, the next raft of trophies to present. And the first of those is to the first female skipper in this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart. It's the Jane Tate Memorial Trophy and half model, the skipper of Supernova, only the second woman to uh, sail in the Sydney Hobart for a 25th time. Please welcome to the stage Felicity Nelson. Looking suitably nautical, I must say. Congratulations, Felicity. 
We move now to a third in IRC Division 3. It's the CYCA Trophy. And the yacht that came across third in that position was Wings, skippered by Ian Edwards. Thank you, Ian. Ina Skipper of Wings. Well done. Well done to Wings. Second in IRC Division 3, the CYCA Trophy. And it's been won by Cinquante. I think I'm giving it the Italian uh, pronunciation. Benoit might be able to do the French for me, but I think it means 50 in either language. Kim Jagger, the owner, skipper of Cinquante. Kim. Wow. That's some shirt, Kim. Mick Jagger would be pleased with that one. Congratulations to Cinquante, second in IRC Division 3. Second in ORCI Division 2, a CYCA trophy to LCE Old School Racing, David Elliott. I know they're in port and probably if you head down to the dock somewhere you'll find some members of the crew but unfortunately they couldn't be here with us today so we'll pass that on to David and the crew of LCE Old School Racing. First in IRC Division 3, they were also first in ORCI Division 2 winning the CYCA Trophy, the ROC Trophy and Replica and the Tazports Trophy, highly sprung and their owner skipper Mark Spring. And that is some trophy. Well, there's some goodies to get back to the seat here. Perhaps the photo could be taken up. Take your masks off if, you, if you've got three hands. Didn't have any octopus on board that could have helped out here. There we go. Congratulations to the skipper and crew of Highly Sprung. And thank you very much, Commodore Bevan. Now I'd like to call to the stage, representing the Tasmanian government here today, the Honourable Madeleine Ogilvie, MHA, and the government, along with the New South Wales government, have done so much to make sure this race got underway. The Honourable Madeleine Ogilvie, MHA, Parliamentary Secretary to the Premier. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm really pleased to be here today on behalf of the Tasmanian Government, but in particular on behalf of the Premier Peter Gutwin, who sends his very warm regards to you all. Um, Your Ex Excellency, Commodores, uh, Monsieur Benoit, uh, as Peter I think is now uh, allocated. I, yeah. <laughs> I was trying. And also, I particularly want to welcome, of course, all the sailors, the owners, friends and relatives, but particularly the volunteers. And I see some of those iconic red t-shirts in the crowd today. Thank you so much for the work that you do. It's so important at the Hobart end of the race um, to welcome people well. It's wonderful to see you all back and to have this iconic summer event return to Tasmanian shores in 2021. Congratulations, of course, to the winners. What a tremendous achievement to, um, to win this incredible race. And to compete in an ocean race such as the Sydney to Hobart does require such a great deal of mental and physical strength, determination, as well as teamwork. Congratulations to everybody who participated. And to be able to compete in a race widely considered as one of the most difficult yacht races in the world, as the overall winner is a huge feat of which you should be proud. And in conjunction with the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, a major sponsor, Rolex, the Tasmanian government is a proud supporter of this unique and prestigious race. And I know I've spoken a little bit about the, the longevity of this race. Um, my mother reminded me that I saw my first race in 1969 from the pram. So I've seen a few of these races come in and I just love it when they come down with the spinnakers unfurled. 
Um, and it must be quite a surreal experience to begin uh, in Sydney's bustling and iconic and beautiful harbour to journey south and to be met by the rugged cliffs of the southern Tasmanian coastline before sailing down the River Derwent and being met by spectators here at Constitution Dock. Now I know it was a slightly different experience this year because of COVID uh, and we've done all that we can to make this event COVID safe but rest assured you're all very very welcome and we're very grateful to have you all back in, in, a, in a homecoming in a sense. The Tasmanian Government through Events Tasmania are very proud to support uh, the CYCA Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. And the government has worked closely with the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia to ensure that everything is COVID safe and delivered in a COVID safe way. Uh, the event was adapted um, to align with our current COVID restrictions and it looks like we were able to deliver a pretty successful event within the current guidelines. But it would be remiss of me, and I know Premier Gutman would tick me off if I didn't say, please do remember to be COVID safe. Follow the rules, use your sanitizer, use your mask um, when you know you need to. Now, the cultural and economic benefits of this iconic race are absolutely significant, and we've heard a little about that from the previous speakers. The race attracts huge media coverage, and that's good for the sport and that's good for our island state. And it gives Tasmania increased national and international exposure, which we're appreciative of. And this year, we've attracted competitors from across Australia. It's a race that truly captures the imagination of the Australian public and is an iconic event on Australia's summer, summer sporting calendar. The Sydney to Hobart is an event of which Tasmanians are truly proud. And we continue and will always continue to embrace this race year after year. And summer in Hobart has been synonymous with seeing the Sydney to Hobart yachts making their way down the Derwent. And the race brings with it that celebratory atmosphere that we all love here. The locals love it and I think our interstate visitors love it too. A festive atmosphere which is further complemented by the taste of summer which is now taking place at PW1, so please do also go and enjoy that. Hobart's waterfront does truly come alive during the festive season and it's wonderful to see so many people here to welcome and congratulate the overall winner of the Sydney Hobart today. I would like to also continue, uh, so also acknowledge the continued support of the important naming rights sponsor, Rolex. Thank you so much, Rolex. Your long association with the race is well regarded and much needed. Uh, sponsors are critical to any sport and we acknowledge that and thank you for your connection. The involvement of the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania and in particular the event organisers at the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia um, thank you so much. Um, and I, I did a little research and I do know that the race also supports charities. So there's, there's something in it for everyone and I'm very pleased to be able to share that piece of information with you today. This event in Tasmania's view positions Hobart and Tasmania as a focal point for sailing and sp sport across the globe. And so many of our kids get into sailing early and we have produced some amazing sailors globally. Many have sailed in the Sydney to Hobart yacht races. We've had Olympians, we've had um, friends sail in the um, America's Cup. You name it, we've had kids doing it. So we love to see that connection with community sport and the focus that an iconic event such as this brings to the table. So finally, a warm and very hearty welcome to the sailors and crew to Terra Firma Tasmania and I trust you will enjoy our hospitality and make your stay a memorable one and enjoy yourselves. Congratulations. Thank you very much Ms Ogilvy. If you could stay here you've got some uh, trophies to present and these are very special. These are the milestone medallions to sailors who this year uh, notched up well a staggering total of races between them. Uh, one man has become, has joined the elite uh, community of racers who've come from Sydney to Hobart 40 or more times. Can you believe that? The 40-year race medallion goes to Bruce Taylor Bruce did his first Hobart race aboard Sunburst in 1980 before commencing the Schutzpaar dynasty in 1986. 
competing in his 40th race this year aboard Chutzpah 6. Bruce has set a record of skippering his own yacht, also all named Schutzpah, for the last 34 consecutive years. You know where he's going to be come Christmas New Year. Bruce has also set another record of sorts by competing with basically the same crew for at least the last 15 years, including his son Drew, who has sailed over 25 races with his dad. The 40-year race medallion goes to Bruce Taylor. Congratulations, Bruce from Melbourne and Schutzpah was right in position there for overall honours a day or so back but couldn't quite bring it home. Now to the 25-year race medallions. We have six of these to present and the first of them goes to Stephen McCallum. <laughs> Better known perhaps to fellow yachties as Rowdy, which means the exact opposite of what it suggests, competed in his first Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race in 1984 aboard Natel 2, following up the next year with Don Calvert in the famous Intrigue. So his uh, connection with Tasmania was cemented forever. In 1988, he was aboard the revolutionary Windward Passage 2. In 1984, Rowdy was the boat captain on Tasmania, taking line honours in the 50th with uh, the all Tasmanian crew virtually, Robert Clifford's boat winning the uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart in that 50th year. He has sailed aboard many famous yachts, particularly Kealoha 2 and six races on Love and War in which he competed again this year. Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen McCallum, his 25th race medallion. Thank you, Rowdy. This woman's already been up onto stage. Let's get her back again in the blue and white stripes. Felicity Nelson. As I mentioned earlier, Felicity becomes only the second woman to achieve 25 races. Competing in her first race in 1987, she joined the late John Walker aboard Impeccable for 12 races, followed by Copernicus for another six, and in 2014 sailed with Shane Kearns aboard Azuro for four races. This year, Felicity completed her 25th race as the co-owner and skipper of Supernova. Felicity Nelson. <laughs> the next 25-year medallion goes to David Witt. Sailing his first race in 1993 aboard Hart's Mineral Water, David has only missed three races to achieve 25. He sailed the Maxi Nokia in the 1998 race, followed by several races aboard Volvo 60s. He joined Grant Warrington aboard Scandia Wild Thing for four races before sailing with Sid Fisher aboard Ragamuffin 100, which became SKH Scallywag, skippering her in the last eight races. And uh, as you're probably aware, uh, David can't be here, but Larry Jamison, a uh, crew member who himself has been on uh, so many of these races, collects the 25-year medallion on his behalf. Thank you, Larry, and well done to David Witt. <laughs> the next medallion has been, uh, will be taken home or will be presented to him shortly. Uh, it's Andrew Buckland. Andrew's uh, medallion to be collected by David Griffith, the uh, skipper of Whisper. Andrew, a seven-time World 18-footer champion, Bucko has had one of the longest careers in the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race, taking 44 years to achieve his 25 races. Sailing his first aboard the British yacht, Knockout, in 1977. Two races with Peter Kurtz aboard Once More Dear Friends in 1980 and 81. He returned to ocean racing in 1990, winning line honours aboard Ragamuffin with Sid Fisher and won the race overall in 1992 aboard Assassin, which he raced on five times. Bucko has also sailed aboard TSA Management, competing in his 25th race this year. Andrew Buckland, and thanks very much to David Griffith for uh, collecting his medallion. The next recipient, and this medallion will be collected by Mark Bradford, goes to Graham Taylor. Graham did his first Rolex Sydney Hobart aboard Foxtel Amazon in 1995 and has only missed one race in his run up to the 25th race this year, which he achieved aboard Blackjack, 
concentrating on the maxi end of the fleet. Sailing with Grant Warrington on Scandia Wild Thing in 13 races for a Line Honours win in 2003 before joining with Wild Oats 11 in 2011 where he went on to sail in nine races for four Line Honours victories and an overall win. Sailing this year aboard Blackjack for yet another Ellingworth Trophy, Graham Taylor. Thank you very much, Mark. Last but not least, to receive the uh, 25th race medallion, it's Gordon Maguire, and to come forward to collect on behalf of Gordon, Matt Allen, the skipper of Ichiban. Irishman Gordon first raced in the uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart aboard Rothmans in 1990, and then aboard the Irish yacht Atara, winning line honours in 1991. Moving to Australia for good in 1996, Gordon sailed on several top yachts, but did six races with Stephen Ainsworth aboard various Lokis, winning in 2011, and for the last eight years with Matt Allen aboard the various itchy barns, winning again in 2017, 2019, and he was the sailing master on this year's win in 2021. An enviable record, winning the Tattersall's Cup four times in 10 years, Gordon Maguire. Thank you very much to Matt Allen for collecting his medallion. Now back to uh, the trophies for positional results in this year's race. Third in IRC Division 2, the CYCA trophy goes to Pretty Water Woman and to collect Richard Hudson and David Beek. I could say that they're not here and said we've got a couple of pretty women, but I won't say that. So uh, thank you to the crew of Pretty woman. How many women, how many men on board? Five women and seven men. So I think the, uh, the most females on any one yacht this year. So uh, appropriate lane, pretty woman. And thank you very much to two crew members who are coming up to collect their third IRC Division II trophy. Congratulations to a pretty woman. Third in ORCI Division 2 and second in IRC Division 2, two CYCA trophies go to Maritimo, Bill Barry Cotter to come forward to collect. Well done to Maritimo. Thank you and well done, Bill. Well done to Maritimo. First in IRC Division 2, winning the Peter Alsop Memorial Trophy and Replica, the CYCA Trophy. Let's get Bruce Taylor back onto the stage. Schutzpa winning first in IRC Division 2. Yeah, getting used to this uh, nice day, he says, as you come up onto the stage. It is indeed. Well done, Bruce. Congratulations. And there's a few more trophies to put on the wall. Home in Melbourne. Well done to Schutzpa. Third in IRC Division 1, the CYCA trophy has been won by Quest, skippered by Craig Neal. Craig. West's been in for a little while, so uh, Craig able to get the jacket and pants on. Well done. Third, IRC Division 1, Quest. Second in IRC Division 1, the CYCA trophy has been won by Smuggler. Sebastian Bohm, owner skipper, can't be with us, but uh, Sam Price is coming forward. Is that Steve there as well? It is. 
Steve, uh, come all the way from Snug via Sydney to uh, collect this prize. Well done to the crew of Smuggler, second in IRC Division 1. Second in IRC Division 0, third in IRCI Division 1. The CYCA trophies have been won by Whisper, David Griffith. Congratulations, a great race from Whisper. And thank you very much, Madeline. We'll allow you to uh, grab your mask and sit back down, please. Thank you very much, Madeline Ogilvie, representing the Tasmanian government, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, or have I sent you back a bit early? I think I might have. We, naturally enough, yes, go back where you were, pretend I didn't say that, but. Uh, because we still have yachts at sea, <laughs> there's a few crossings out and there's quite a few trophies we're unable to present today, but uh, Madeline Ogilvy, MHA, has got a couple more to present. Um, this trophy is for third in the two-handers light honours uh, situation, so fantastic to have the two-handers and I think this is a, a category that is going to grow uh, as this... Uh, race continues. The CYCA trophy, third across the line in the two-handed division, was Salt Shaker, skippered by Peter Frankie and Drew Jones. They came into the uh, Sullivan's Cove and King's Pier not too long ago, so I don't know whether they are with us yet, but we will make sure that uh, that prize is delivered down to Salt Shaker. Uh, second in the two-handed line honours, winning the CYCA trophy. I've seen them uh, in the dock. Let's hope that they're here with us now. The two at the uh, controls of this race uh, from Sydney all the way to Hobart, 628 nautical miles, just two crew. Second was Disco Trooper, Contender Sailcloth, Jules Hall and Jan Scholten. You can come up those steps if you'd like. Well done. Surely you can find your way to the, that over having found your way all the way to Hobart. Uh, after such a, a tough first night, it, I can't even imagine how much work these two have done, but they're looking very fresh. Disco Trooper, Contender Sailcloth, second across the line in the two-handed division. Yules Hall and John uh, Jan Scholten. Thank you, gents. But we can really get to cheer this one, those of us that uh, live in Tasmania. First, taking Lion Honours for the first time ever, and I know that they set their sights on doing it, and they have done it. The CYCA Trophy, the Tasmanian entry from the uh, Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, Sidewinder, skippered by Rob Goff and John Saul. I know Rob's feeling a little tender around the ribs. He might have a fracture. Uh, that could have been uh, diagnosed by his uh, co-skipper, John Saul, who uh, has wrecked his good shoulder, apparently. Uh, so he's got matching crook shoulders, but they have taken line honours in the two-handed division in this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. The crew of Sidewinder. I think now you can sit down, Madeline. Thank you very much. Madeline Ogilvy, MHA, representing the government of Tasmania. Could I call to the microphone now the Commodore of the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia? He's been very busy. He hasn't shirked any of his media responsibilities. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together, please, for Noel Cornish, Commodore of the CYCA. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this year's 76th 
role like Sydney Hobart Yacht Race has certainly been a great one for the records. Despite the continuing challenges of border restrictions across the globe and the many impositions caused by the health guidelines that have impacted so heavily on all our lives and world sport this year, the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race has returned in 2021 at a level few would have expected 12 months ago. 88 competitors across 16 divisions rose to the challenge on Boxing Day including 17 two-handed yachts that have staked their place in the history by competing in the inaugural two-handed division. And for these crews, this has been, in my view, a good, traditional, tough Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race. From having to battle and overcome the difficult weather and seas of the first two days to having to tactically navigate the light winds and weather transitions on the Tasmanian coast and the Derwent River, this year's finishes have triumphed over these adverse conditions and are truly deserving of their place in the race's rich history. Your camaraderie and support for the Rolex Sydney Hobart this year has been extraordinary. I would like everyone to be aware that I do not believe that this year's race would have gone ahead without the tireless perseverance and dedication of our CEO, Justine Kirkchen. Negotiations with various authorities commenced in June and have been relentless, but we've had very constructive uh, negotiations which has helped, but it's just been never ending. And these negotiations included up to Christmas Day evening. So would you please join me in thanking her for her massive efforts this year. I would also particularly like to recognise and thank the many volunteers who have given so much of their time helping make this such a great event once again. Their passion for our sport and their efforts are a true testament to community spirit. On behalf of the CYCA, our heartfelt thanks goes to our long-standing and much appreciated partners at the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania, who for over three quarters of a century have worked with us to deliver an event of high calibre. We sincerely thank Commodore Richard Bevan and his board, as well as Sue Ball and her team for their unwavering assistance. Thanks must also extend to our other race stakeholders, Transport New South Wales, Tasports, Events Tasmania, Tourism Tasmania, the City of Hobart, the winning group for provision of the radio relay vessel JBW and to our Hobart, Hobart Village partner, the Tasman. And of course, I would like to reserve a very special thanks to Rolex for their encouragement and generous assistance. Rolex's support for sport that challenges human endeavour and adventure around the world has been unparalleled. We would like to particularly thank Benoit Folletti and his Australian team, as well as the Rolex team in Geneva for their ongoing commitment. As the 76th Rolex Sydney Hobart draws to a close, we wish those yachts still out on the water a safe final leg home. And to all competitors and friends, a safe return journey. I'm looking forward to seeing you all back again next year for one of the greatest yachting adventures of a lifetime, the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you very much, Commodore Cornish. Some trophies now for you to present. The first of them is for third in IRC overall winning the uh, RYCT trophy and replica and the Storm Bay Cup and replica. This will be a popular win. It's Love and War, skippered by Simon Kurtz.
It looked there for a time until the vagaries of uh, Storm Bay and the River Derwent that Love and War might do it for a record-breaking fourth time, but third is not too bad, I think you'll agree. Simon Kurtz, ladies and gentlemen. Well done to Simon and the crew of Love and War. The first small boat across the line wins the Battery Point Trophy and half model. And this will be popular as well. It's another Tasmanian entry. Two of them finished this year. And Midnight Rambler from the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania wins the first small boat across the line. Skippered by Ed Saltus. Ed, come forward to uh, collect your trophy, please. And she looked in mint condition there at the uh, down there on King's Pier too. They looked after the the boat very well. I've spoken to my neighbour Tim Jones, who was on board, and he's taking all the credit. But I think Ed had something to do with it as well. Stay there, Ed. Uh, we're going to make the presentation now for Navigator of the first Tasmanian yacht on corrected time, and that's Midnight Rambler, the City of Hobart trophy and plaque. Andrew Davison was the Navigator on board, and Ed Saltis to collect the trophy on behalf of Andrew. <laughs> yes, get, get that mask off, Ed. And one more for you. And this is for the first Tasmanian yacht in the IRC division. It's the Tasports Trophy. And it's Mid Midnight Rambler. And uh, Ed Saltis, the skipper, owner, come forward and receive. I think this is the last of your silverware or plaques to take home. Beautiful bit of Tassie timber for you there. Well done to Ed Saltis and the crew on Midnight Rambler. That was bound to happen. Trust it to be you, Ed. You might get some help carrying those back. One under each arm. Oh, this will be very dicey, I think. <laughs> yeah, here we go. This is the first night. Survived just as well as the boat did. Thanks to you. Uh, your captaincy. Thanks very much and congratulations to Midnight Rambler. First IRORCI Division 1 and this is the Charleston Trophy. Also first in IRC Division 1 the uh, George Barton Trophy and Replica plus a CYCA Trophy. Uh, second IRC overall, the City of Hobart Trophy and Replica, Bass Strait Cup and Recla uh, Replica, Solo Trophy and Replica, CYCA Trophy. I think you're going to need some help, Sam. Sam Haynes and the crew of Celestial. Well done, mate. So close, so close, but uh, plenty to show for it. <laughs> Who's going to take the wheels home? <laughs> they stay, right, probably just as well. Celestial might sink under the weight of the trophies. There's the group photo. And Sam, I think you might like to say a few words. Sam is also a committee member of the CYCA, a board member, ladies and gentlemen, skipper of Celestial, Sam Haynes. I'd just like to um, thank you all, Your, Your Excellency, the Commodores, uh, Rolex, and I'd also like to thank the clubs, uh, the race management and their volunteers. It's been an awesome race. I'd also like to thank my fellow competitors. Um, we all go out there to, 
to compete as hard as we can in this race and, um, and it's enjoyable having that competition. Our boat Celestial is beautifully prepared and I also would like to thank some of the people which are involved in that, such as North Sails, Sydney Rigging and Southern Spars, Marine Element, Harkin, Electric Systems and all the other professionals that service the yacht. Mainly I'd also really feel that at this opportunity I'd like to name my crew and thank them for the race that they put in. They raced incredibly hard, they were fantastic to have on board and we raced the race of our lives. Led by Jack McCartney, our, our tactician and sailing master, Dave Chapman tact, um, on strategy and, and go fast, James Dagg, our navigator, Will Howard and Richie Howard, the Howard brothers, both known as their, for their helming and trimming capabilities and just so solid as sailors. Harry West joining us, trimming, bow, you name it, Harry did it. He was an amazing sailor. Richard Bott prepared the boat beautifully and uh, maintained it throughout the race. We had very, very little go wrong and um, it's a testament to him that the boat is in such good shape. We had Johnny Warren, um, again a trimmer and driver. Louis Brake, driving, trimming, doing all sorts of things around the boat. And our fabulous bow bowman, Wolf Wilkins, who never shied away from any of the sail changes. We had many, many sail changes on this boat. Malcolm Parker, he had an amazing race. I really respected Malcolm for what he did on this race. Callum Cecil holds us all together. He's our pit man and he is one of the people which I've sailed with for many, many years. We've all sailed, get, sailed together a lot. And both Callum and myself are celebrating our 10th uh, Sydney to Hobart to, in this particular race. Troy Grafton, our Tasmanian, um, sailing on Celestial now for several campaigns. Uh, again, a trimmer, a driver, and another person that you really want to have beside you if things get gnarly. Tom Grimes, he's on debut with us. He's our last crew member to name. Tom um, is probably up here to help me carry um, some of these trophies down. Tom um, has had his first Sydney to Hobart uh, now, and um, Tom was an amazing and uh, talented sailor to bring on board the boat. Young person, and uh, conducted himself extremely well. There's lots of positives out of the race for me. Um, as I say, the sailing was awesome. We had a, a brilliant sail. The conditions, I don't know, I'd upgrade them from um, tough to maybe brutal and then potentially highness. They were pretty hard, especially when we had the thunderstorms in the middle of the night on the first, first morning. It was terrible. But the boat held it together, the crew held it together, and we raced really hard. We went through all sorts of conditions in this race, as everyone knows and uh, it was a race to be proud of, no matter what your result was. But on water, we had a fantastic result. We raced incredibly well, and I'm really proud of what we did and what our crew did. Everyone probably knows where I am at um, as far as the result is concerned, and it's very, very difficult for us, and it's very difficult for me to be in the position I'm in, as everyone has probably heard. But tomorrow is another day, and we will be back. Thank you. Well said, Sam. Congratulations to you, Tom, and the rest of the crew. But personally, I think you've conducted yourself in the last 24 hours in an exemplary manner. And what an example of sportsmanship we've seen from Sam Haynes, the skipper owner of Celestial. And don't worry, everyone will remember what you and your crew did this year. Celestial, second in the uh, great race the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. Now this is a plaque that is being presented for meritorious service, ladies and gentlemen. When I announce the name of the recipient, I expect you might know who I'm talking about. It's Anthony John Hughes. Quizzical looks, you probably better know him as Sam Hughes. Uh, nicknamed by his grandfather, he knows not why and perhaps even more affectionately known as Safety Sam, the Meritorious Service Award winner. Please put your hands together. And Sam, you're going to have to stand over there and listen as I go through a synopsis of your career. He was appointed to the race committee in 1994, being the 50th running of the race. 
Sam brought to the Rolex Sydney Hobart Race Committee all his experience as a naval officer. In fact, he was on board a Royal Navy vessel off the coast of France uh, when the first ever Exocet missile was test fired. Thank heavens it got off the boat and hit its target or he might not be here with us. Uh, for many years he was an employee of the Australian Maritime Safety Authority and they're the sort of credentials he brought to this position. Sam's an active yachtsman being a member of the Canberra Yacht Club and the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania. Uh, he's so well regarded down here he was able to charter Mirabuka for a fortnight one year with uh, the payment of a slab of cascade. Not too many could get away with that. Sam's experience came to the fore in the 1998 race when he had a real calmness, especially in dealing with the relatives of the yachtsman who died in that catastrophic event. Race, uh, Sam has consistently and generously provided mentoring and guidance to newer members of the race committee and race control team. He's provided a calm demeanour, a steady hand on the tiller and a friendly disposition to the smooth running of the race for 27 years. A wonderful contribution, ladies and gentlemen, I think you'll agree to this wonderful race and an award well deserved. The meritorious service award winner is Anthony Sam Hughes. The next trophy isn't always presented, I, I think, but uh, this year it certainly is well deserved as well. This is the Rani Trophy for um, meritorious contribution to the race, and the winner this year is a Tasmanian yacht, Oscana from the uh, Derwent Sailing Squadron and the Royal Yacht Club of Tasmania. Oscana was uh, a withdrawal on the first night of the race, but that didn't stop them standing aside Denali during the Pan Pan that, that, uh, uh, that emanated from that yacht, uh, despite having retired themselves with uh, damage. Uh, Rani Trophy is... Uh, most deservedly going to the uh, co-owners and skippers of Oscana and they are Paul McCartney and Mike Pritchard. I think Mike's with us. Mike, can you come forward please? Or is it in fact Silas Hamilton's going to uh, collect the award? Paul and Michael can't be here with us. So the Rani Trophy goes to Oscana. Thank you, Silas, and better luck next year for your yacht. Now, the overall winner's medallions to the crew of our winning yacht this year, Ichiban. There are 15 of them, and I will call them up. They're each to receive a medal, a medallion, from uh, Commodore Cornish. Uh, that last award was judged by the uh, race committee. Uh, this award for the winners of uh, the, the major silverware and that's the Tattersall's Cup. The overall winner of the Sydney Hobart this year, Ichiban, and to present the medallions, could I please call back up again to the stage, uh, Tasmanian Government Representative Madeline Ogilvy, MHA. So the first of the medallions, we'll go from pointy end back. From New South Wales, it's Craig Garnett. Craig, come forward, are you with us? No? So he's in the bow, we'll make sure he gets his medallion. Is his fellow bowman, uh, Davin Conocrave from South Australia here? No? Well, perhaps Matt Allen could come forward to collect all these. Could we get the skipper up, perhaps? Matt, you might as well stay up here, you'll be here for the rest of the day. Matt Allen, ladies and gentlemen, skipper owner of Ichiban, and a couple of crew members at least. So here are all the winners' medallions. So, so far we've had Craig and Davin winning their awards. The next winners' medallion goes to Sean O'Rourke from New South Wales, a trimmer. <laughs> Victorian trimmer, Matthew uh, T. Howe from uh, Victoria, as I said, uh, he gets his award. Matthew, congratulations. Another trimmer. There's five of them in all. Oliver Smith from New South Wales. I think it might have been 
Ollie's first race this year. Am I right? Incorrect. And so first time winner. Tim Ryan from New South Wales wins uh, his medallion for being on board Itchy Barn. Dick Parker from New South Wales, the fifth of the trimmers. Give him a round of applause. The grinder, James Patterson from South Australia. From New South Wales, the uh, watch leader, Noel Drennan. Also watch lead from New South Wales, Ben Lamb. The sower. I don't know whether he had any work to do in this race. I'd expect he did. Jeremy Ray from Victoria. The sailing master. Having done his 25th race to uh, take home the honours, it's Gordon Maguire from New South Wales. The boat captain and surrogate media swimmer on behalf of uh, Matt Allen, Timothy Sellers, who obviously hasn't dried up having been uh, dunked today. Or, or is that Timothy there? It is. There he is. Well done, Timothy. You look like you didn't want to get out down there today. It, the, the water here, beautiful temperature. Don't let anybody tell you it's too cold in Tasmania. The navigator. And uh, Matt will collect this on his behalf. It's Will Oxley from Queensland. And last but not least, from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, the skipper owner of Ichiban, Matt Allen, AM. His fourth victory from 31 starts. Matt's first win was uh, aboard Lou Abraham's challenge in 1983 and now Itchy Barn has joined a, a steam company, only the third yacht, to win the race third time for a third time. So uh, let's put your hands together once more for all the uh, crew members of Itchy Barn. Now could I have uh, Commodore Cornish please back up to uh, prevent, present the overall winner's trophy? and all the other trophies that have come the way of Ichiban. The trophy for designer of the winning yacht, the Alan Payne Memorial Trophy and Replica, Boaten are the designers of Ichiban and Matt Allen to collect the trophy. And there is the trophy and replica. Andrea flashing the, uh, the uh, photos that I'm sure will go back to Bowton. Navigator of the winning yacht, and as I told you, he can't be with us here today, to collect the Bill Owen Memorial Trophy and replica, Will Oxley, the navigator on Ichiban. Well done to Will. And now the spoils for the owner skipper. Second, IORCI Division 1, the CYCA Trophy, the Tattersall's Cup and Replica. First, IRC Division 0, Rush Cutter Trophy and Replica, the CYCA Trophy as well. First yacht under 18 and a half metres across the finish line, that's the Apollo Trophy and half model. The first IRC overall, the CYCA trophy, the ROC plaque and replica, Government of Tasmania trophy and replica, the Rolex Yacht Master timepiece to the TP52 Itchy Barn, owned and skippered by Matt Allen. And could I call Benoit Folletti back to the stage, please, to present the Rolex Yacht Master timepiece to the uh, winning skipper of Itchy Barn. First IRC overall, the Rolex Yacht Master to Matt Allen and Itchy Barn. Itchy Barn joins Freya and Love and War as a winner of this race for the third time. Matt, could we please call you to the microphone to say a few words? Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Many people have spoken already today, but certainly this was a race that really had everything 
and certainly an incredible tactical race after what I would say the brutal conditions of the first 24 hours. We certainly had a great match race with our part of the fleet and certainly the Celestial Quest, Ichiban, three-way match race and then at the later stages the match race with Celestial was really something that was a nail-biting and tense and incredibly close race. Sam Haynes said that he was incredibly proud of his crew and his performance and so he should be. Celestial sailed a brilliant race on the water and you should all be proud of your incredible achievements this year. I'd also like to congratulate Mark Bradford, Peter Harburg and the crew of Blackjack. They did a terrific job and we all know what that crew have gone through over many years with the boat without the best of luck. So we're incredibly happy to see them come through. I've often thought that, and said that this race is about the people. The boats come and go. The people are really important about this race. And I think that's true today as it ever was. But there seems to be one exception to that. There is one boat that just continues to perform over so many decades. It's always incredibly well prepared. It's always incredibly well sailed. It won the race in 1974, 1978, 2006, and then bronze medal in 2021. It's an amazing performance. And I'd just like to congratulate Simon Kurtz, the crew of Love and War, and I know Peter would be looking down and would be very proud of your performance at this year's race. It was quite an amazing achievement from the huge disappointment when the 2020 race was, was cancelled to be out on Sydney Harbour on Boxing Day just over a year ago was something that really gave all sailors an incredibly empty feeling. What did we do on Boxing Day without a Rolex Sydney to Hobart Yacht Race start? The harbour was almost empty apart from a few small number of boats that went across an imaginary start line at, at 1pm. Can I just say on behalf of all sailors, an incredible thanks to the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia and the Royal Yacht Club of T Tasmania and all the stakeholders who got together, including the Tasmanian and New South Wales governments, and of course Rolex, to actually make the 2021 race actually get off, get the gun started and uh, make the race happen. Thank you very much for your incredible efforts to get this race done and started and finished. We had the pleasure of dealing with a large number of people and I don't, I, I couldn't even name them all but I would uh, echo uh, Noel Cornish's comments about Justine Kirchin. But we dealt a lot with Tara Blank Ramos and Tara Fraser, Tara 1, Tara 2 in the sailing office and it was a great pleasure to deal with them both. Um, the team, at the, the staff of the CYC are an incredible team and nothing is too difficult for them. But also the volunteers, the volunteers in Sydney and the volunteers in Hobart were, were just amazing, uh, just incredible and the, a great welcome to the dock here. It was a complicated procedure. Some of us were on top of it. Some like me were not on top of it at all. Um, but everyone was patient and guided us through that process. And a special thanks to Rolex. Even though the, the first race that they sponsored, the first Sydney to Hobart race they sponsored was 2002, the relationship dates back um, even a little bit longer than that with the Cruising Yacht Club. So I think it's fair to say we're now in the 20th year of the relationship with Rolex. 
I've developed some terrific friendships and, um, with the people at Rolex, both in Australia and Geneva, over that time. And I can just say this race could not have a better sponsor nor a greater friend. Thank you. And finally, to my crew, unfortunately, many have sent their apologies, obviously. Um, some of them haven't been with their families for four months and only got back to their families last night. So they send their apologies. But I really want to thank my crew and the two, my two guys here, Tim and Matthew, are the two guys who prepared the boat. And everything that we do on the racetrack is thanks to them. All the crew just never give up, as many of the crews in this race. But I just really want to thank them. It's a great team. It's a great privilege for me to sail with them. And I thank you very much. And I look forward to the start of the race in 2022. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Matt Allen. He is so vitally involved with so many aspects in Australian yacht racing. Uh, but now he is a three-time winner of the uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. What a special achievement for he and his crew, Tim and Matthew, and all those on board. Ichiban, winner of the uh, 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. There are still a number of trophies to be presented with the placings uh, not yet decided in uh, all the various divisions. Uh, they'll be finalised hopefully tonight. I've just had a quick look on the yacht tracker and there are nine yachts still at sea. So that's nine of the 51, barring any more uh, uh, withdrawals from the race who will be classed as finishers this year. So uh, New Year's Eve at sea for nine yachts, but I'm sure some of them will come in tonight. So go down and give them the uh, traditional Hobart welcome as they come in on New Year's Eve. But uh, once they're all in and all the results have been calibrated, those trophies that haven't been presented here today will be presented tomorrow at the uh, Rolex Yacht Race Village down at uh, King's Pier at a time to be advised. So keep a lookout if you're expecting a little bit more uh, silverware to come your way. Before we send you on your way, let's just sit back and uh, have a, uh, a montage look back at what has transpired in the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart.
I'm sure for the many yachts, women and men in the room here today, it's the first time they've seen those pictures. Thank you to all of us on Landside for putting on such a great show for us in 2021. And thank you to the uh, editors and camera crews for bringing us such dramatic and beautiful pictures. Well, can't wait for 2022, ladies and gentlemen. Before we think about the new year, could I ask you all please to be upstanding for the departure of Her Excellency and the official party. Thank you everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the presentations for the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. As I said, those trophies still be presented. We'll be done so tomorrow in the race village. I hope you can join us for that. But uh, on behalf of the organisers of uh, the Rolex Sydney Hobart, may I wish you all a happy new year. Have a, uh, an enjoyable and safe night everybody and we'll see you back in 2022. Thank you for your attendance here today.